So schools pushing for uh, there is growing pressure for President Biden to retaliate against Russia after the latest ransomware attack crippled hundreds of companies, many here in the U.S. On Friday, Biden says he warned President Putin to crack down on Russian based hackers or the U.S. will strike back. I made it very clear to him, the United States expects when a ransomware operation is coming from his soil, even though it's not not sponsored by the state, we expect them to act. So what now? General Jack Keane's with us. General, good morning to you. Got a lot to go over. Thank you for your time today. What, was Geneva a flat-out failure? Well, I don't think it's ever a failure to, to meet with an adversary and put issues on, on the table. Uh, you know, as you know, I, I think we could have had that meeting later with a full agenda done by staff prior to it. But getting to the matter here, I mean, I think the, the real issue is the Biden administration, I, I'm stunned by it. Uh, I don't think they've come to grips yet with the fact that Russia and China are conducting massive cyber warfare as an instrument of their national power to diminish and weaken the United States. In other words, they're using non-kinetic means to bring their number one adversary down as much as they possibly can. And this is campaigns that are directed by the leadership of both of these countries. And here we're still issuing warnings. I mean, after the Colonial Pipeline attack bill, which was the East Coast Pipeline Distribution System, we should have conducted a counterattack directed by the president authorized for Cyber Command to do that, much as we did successfully in 2018 and the 2020 elections when Russia interfered in both of those elections. It was publicly announced that we had successfully destroyed the infrastructure that had conducted that attack. So we have the means to do this. And certainly, after repeated ransomware attacks, and now we find that the Russian government, their intelligence service, at least reported by the media, has conducted an attack against the RNC, the Republican National Committee, much as the same organization did against the DNC in 2016. This is the same organization that did Solar Winds. It's their intelligence services. And why aren't we doing anything about that? There's no mystique about that. That is directed, certainly, by the leadership of the Russian government. It's astounding to me where we are. Here's what I see here, Bill, is the same pattern I saw with President Obama. Biden is paralyzed by the fear of adverse consequence, and the fear here is escalation. And it's got him bogged down, and he can't act decisively. To, to that point, here's the Pentagon press secretary responding to Chris Wallace this weekend. Just because you, uh, you, have, you face a cyber attack doesn't mean that that's how you, you necessarily respond in kind. There's a, a whole range uh, of tools at the president's disposal. Some of those tools reside here at the Pentagon and at Cyber Command, uh, and we're going to be prepared and ready to tee up those options for him whenever he might need them. What do you think of that response? Well, he doesn't have a mission. That's what he's telling us. He, no one's given him a mission to do anything. And certainly, yes, you can use many tools in the government uh, besides conducting a counterattack, but to impose cost on the people that are conducting it, believe me, that is, that is step one. Yes, you can do sanctions. Yes, you can take other diplomatic initiatives, but that is the first trigger that should be executed. Well, General, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, I guess you could ask about Geneva. If you're not going to call it a failure, you can say, what was the point? What was the point of going in the first place if the message was stop it? And if you don't stop it, I'm going to give you the list of things that are off, that, that, that you cannot touch. And Nothing's changed. Uh, watch that. In the meantime, Greg Palcott delivered a riveting report about 30 minutes ago. He's in Kabul, Afghanistan. Sir, what are we to understand about what will come of that country and our own mission after? Yeah, so our viewers understand. It's like all of a sudden the Taliban have become 10 foot tall and they seem to be about ready to take the country over. And, and I'm, su I'm surprised that people don't understand that this was in the cards. And the military and intelligence service was certainly broadcasting the potential for what we're seeing. Why is this happening? So our viewers understand, we stopped direct combat operations in 2014. The ground force then was the Afghan security forces and has been ever since by themselves. But we provide enablers to them. And there's two significant enablers that we have removed that are factors in what we're seeing. One is robust intelligence capability, publicly disclosed that we had a significant CI presence in Afghanistan, is very helpful. And number two, United States air power, supporting the Afghan ground forces. We pulled the plug on both of those. 
That demoralizes the Afghan security forces because now they know they don't have any air power at their back. They don't have the same fidelity on the enemy that they had before. They recognize the operational difference that that means and increases their lives. They're not the strongest military force in the world by far, as we all recognize here, and it's having its impact. And that is what we are seeing before our eyes. General Miller will step down today from his command. Um, he's very highly regarded by the troops. Just maybe a last quick thought about his service there. Uh, just exemplary service. Uh, one of the best commanders we've ever had in Afghanistan. He understands the strategic issues of the region, understands the, the local politics of dealing with uh, President Ghani and the diff the diffuse situation that they have there and have to work around all of that, and then operationally savvy. I mean, this guy truly understands this form of warfare. He grew up in it, you know, over mm -hmm. the last 20 years as a special operator, and he's one of the very best we got. He's right up there with Dave Petraeus and Stan McChrystal as absolutely the best counterinsurgency generals any nation probably has ever produced. High praise wow. indeed and well-deserved, mm -hmm. certainly. Thank you. Thank you, General. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.